Welcome to the Tennessee Achieves Virtual Community Service Webinar. These webinars are designed to provide you, Tennessee Promise students, with an opportunity to learn more about college success tips, careers in your potential field of study, and other topics we think you will find interesting while you are navigating your educational journey. These webinars will also help you complete your community service requirement while it may be difficult for you to do so at this time. A few housekeeping details before we get started. By logging in as a Tennessee Achieve student, we are able to track your attendance and how long you remain actively engaged during the webinar. Once you complete the webinar, you will automatically be given credit for one hour of community service. We will track how long you watch, and if you do not watch the webinar in its entirety, you will not receive credit. You do not need to complete the community service form for these webinars. Tennessee Achieves will log your hours for you. Tennessee Achieves staff and partners across the state are providing important insight and information we think you will find entertaining and informative. We hope you enjoy this new series of webinars. Welcome to the Tennessee Achieves virtual community service webinar series. I'm Graham Thomas, and today we are talking about careers in local government. We are fortunate to have um, former Knox County Mayor Mike Ragsdale, who is also um, a founding board member of Tennessee Achieves, really probably call him Mayor, if you're okay, then we'll just call you the godfather of Tennessee Achieves, the initiative created <laughs> out of your office and your time as mayor, and something we certainly want to talk about. Um, and then uh, we also have joining us weekly county mayor, Jake Bynum. I want to thank you both for being here today. My pleasure. Thank you, Graham. Um, mayor Ragsdale, we'll start with you. Um, why don't you give us a little bit of background on yourself, kind of who you are. Um, talk a little bit about your college experience, where you went to college, degrees that you may have earned, um, and a little bit about your career um, and any time you'd like to share as mayor. Well, thanks, Graham. It's a pleasure to be on with Mayor Bynum this afternoon. I grew up in Cleveland, Tennessee, uh, a community down near Chattanooga, and went to the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, got my undergraduate degree, had an opportunity to uh, take advantage of a scholarship and got a master's degree at Auburn University, then came back and got a uh, doctorate in education from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. Uh, left there and started my career actually at Pellissippi State Community College a wonderful school in, in Knoxville and spent seven years there. Then I spent uh, 16 years in private business. During that time, I ran for county commission and was successfully elected in 1990. And then in 2002, I was elected as a uh, Knox County mayor job, which I thoroughly enjoyed serving in for eight years before I was term limited and left office in 2010. So I had uh, a couple of different stints in uh, political office and in public service, and I enjoyed it greatly. Great, Mayor. Thanks so much for that background. Mayor Bynum, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so I was born and raised in Weekly County, um, never lived anywhere but Weekly County, as a matter of fact. Uh, graduated from high school from the one of my local high schools here in the community um, and then went straight to UC Martin, um, where I spent four of the greatest years of my life there um, and immediately went to work for a local bank. Um, didn't even look at options as far as going anywhere else. They offered me a job, and so I took it, and they just happened to be the only people that offered me a job, which is the reason why I took it. Um, and then spent almost 10 years in banking, doing consumer lending, um, account management, those sort of things. Uh, and about two years before I actually ran for office, um, an opportunity presented itself where um, my predecessor, uh, sort of announced that he was not going to run for office again. Uh, county mayors in rural communities typically don't have term limits, but he had served two terms um, and had decided not to run again. And so we saw an opportunity and thought that we would go out there and try and do that. Uh, and so in 2014, I was elected county mayor here in Weekly County. Um, at the time, was the youngest county mayor in the state uh, for that first term. Uh, I'm no longer the youngest one in the state um, now on my second term, uh, but uh, enjoy the job. Can't imagine doing anything any different. Um, like I said, I've got a four-year degree from, from UT Martin um, and actually am now getting a master's degree from Lipscomb University in leadership and public service um, and am currently enrolled in that program now. Mayor right. Bonham, how old were you? I'm curious, how old were you when you were elected? The first so time. I was elected, um, so the elections in August, and so I was elected at 
30. I turned 31 in November. So um, I actually announced almost a year to the day of the election. So I announced at 29 um, and then, uh, like I said, was the youngest that, that entire first term. Um, and I still am younger. I was younger when I was elected than the youngest one now, but, but he's, he's beaten me out. He's just a hair younger than I am now. That's good. Who's the youngest now, Mayor Bynum? Uh, Joseph Butler in Carroll County, so oh. neighboring county. Um, so we've got kind of a little coalition of young mayors um, here in northwest Tennessee. There's a couple of young city mayors as well that are close to our age. So we're we're referring ourselves um, to ourselves as the Millennial Mayors Caucus <laughs> over here in West Tennessee. <laughs> Mayor uh, Butler, also a Tennessee Achieves mentor, which both of you guys left that out of your bios, and I would argue is maybe your most important line in your um, resumes there. But um, I'll, I'll get on top of fixing that. Sorry about that, Graham. And Graham, I'll do the same. That's a great point. I appreciate you guys both being here today and, and all the things that you've done. Um, Mayor Ragsdale starting the program. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. Um, and Mayor Bynum helping us to get it launched in Weekly County. Um, and we're going to talk about some of the impact of Tennessee Promise in your communities. But um, Mayor Rags, let's start talking a little bit about the actual job duties and what you did as county mayor. You know, we all see the interviews um, in the newspaper. We see you on TV. Um, what is the real day-to-day -day job of being a mayor like? It's interesting. It's a, In many ways, it's like a private business, and in some ways, it's quite different. You're the chief executive officer of your local government. And I think local government's critically important. I've always thought that good government didn't begin in the White House, it began in the courthouse. And uh, I think that's true still to this day. So in, in our particular case, we had counting our teachers, 10,000 employees. The teachers were the largest group of that. Of course, we had a school superintendent, but the county mayor's responsible for funding the school system. So you are somewhat, uh, have a purview over that important part of government. And same thing with the sheriff, while well, you have a sheriff and a in a jail, that's a large part of your budget you have to account for every year. So we had uh, many departments, public health, public libraries, transportation, engineering and public works. And that list seems to go on and on and on. And plus what maybe some people don't realize, you're also as county mayor, the head of your county's emergency management agency. So if something goes wrong, the buck actually stops with you. In Knox County, we had a home rule government, so we could make our own rules and regulations. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. It brings government again closer to the people. So no two days in public office were alike for me. And uh, they all had a unique set of challenges and a unique set of wonderful experiences. So one day you may be dealing with parks and recreation issue. Another day you may be dealing with public health. I can remember we had a train wreck where we had to evacuate several thousand people. And of all things in East Tennessee, we had a mudslide one time that took out a uh, apartment living complex in the middle of the night. So it's something different all the time, but it gave you a unique opportunity to work with people from all walks of life. I can remember one day that uh, I was with the president of the United States in the morning, a dairy farmer from East Knox County in the afternoon and had dinner with Pat Summit that evening. There are very few jobs where you can have that many great experiences in one day and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mayor Rags, I want to ask you a little bit about kind of maybe to elaborate upon what you're just talking about. Um, you had a background in education when you became mayor having worked at Pell City State, but I imagine you wouldn't call yourself an expert at law enforcement or the fire department or parks and rec or all the things that it is. So how do you learn that skill set to navigate such a diverse array of stakeholders and a diverse array of responsibilities? I was fortunate uh, in that I had been a county commissioner for eight years. Uh, I wasn't as young as Mayor Bynum when uh, when he was elected mayor, but I was elected as a county commissioner at 35 years old and did that for uh, eight years. Great learning experience for me. While you're in a legislative body, you still learn a great deal about the inner workings of county government. So I had a little bit of advantage doing that. There really isn't a great way to be uh, trained for the mayor's job. It is a lot of on the job training and experience. Consequently, it's critically important that you surround yourself with good people, people that you can trust, people that you can count on. And if you have good department heads and they have great folks working with them, you're going to be successful. But if you have some weak links, that's going to show up very obviously too. So 
uh, I think it's a really good thing to hire the best folks you can find, let them do their jobs. They want to stay on top of it, let it, them keep you informed. But if you have good people, I think that's the only real way of making sure that you can achieve success. Thanks for sharing that with us. Mayor Bonham, what about you? What does your day-to-day -day look like? I know as we were popping on the webinar today, you were talking about a fire. Um, so tell us about some a literal fire, not a figurative putting out of a, a fire, but tell us about your day-to-day -day and some of the things that go on. Yeah, um, that that literal fire um, is, is a new experience for us um, up here at the courthouse. But uh, so obviously we're smaller than Knox County. Um, and so things look a little different when you talk about county mayors in rural settings. Um, some of the jobs are very much the same. Um, it's just the sheer number of people that you're dealing with that's different. Uh, you know, county mayor here is also in charge of veterans and uh, senior citizens and EMA and all of those sort of things. Uh, but we, a lot of times, have said when people ask, like, what does the county mayor do? Uh, we sort of say, you know, the county mayor's primary responsibility is to be a salesman for the county, is to go out and, and try and sell that sell the county um, to different constituent groups. So is that to your local constituents as far as some initiative that you're trying to do? Is that to some state programming or um, organization that you're trying to receive funding from? Or is it outside of the state, um, some company that you're trying to land um, to come into Weekly County and offer economic opportunity for your citizens? Um, and so that's what those jobs look like from day to day. I would agree with Mayor Ragsdale. No day has ever looked the same. Um, those days look a little similar now um, because I spend primarily the majority of my day sitting in my office, uh, given the current situation that we're in. Um, but that is probably the least um, enjoyable part of the job because I'm I'm a I'm a people person. I'm out. I like to be in the community. I like sort of being up and down the road, um, going to work every day for the people of Weekly County. Um, but that looks very different on a day-to-day -day basis. Mayor Bime, you mentioned some of the differences between being mayor in a large county like Knox or a more rural county like Weekly. What are some of the challenges and what are some of the advantages of being mayor in a small county? In the smaller county. yeah um certainly you know some of the challenges are uh, so while you see in some of the larger metropolitan areas um county mayors have more authority um and some to some extent or more availability for programming you know we don't get into things in the rural areas here um at the county level as far as parks or um those sort of things uh, where you see that sometimes in the more metropolitan areas. Uh, but we are, you know, trying to be as as much as we can a part of those conversations in the municipalities. Um, some of the advantages that we like to talk about is, is obviously I have a, um, a greater reach um, in the day-to-day -day lives sometimes of more constituents. So even though I actually represent less people, um, I, nearly everybody sort of knows who I am. I can walk down the street and sort of identify the majority of people that I come in contact with. Um, that's harder to do in those metropolitan areas. Um, we're also seeing um, some advantages when you talk about um, these large scale problems that the state's having. Those effects don't have the same kind of effects that they do at, at, the, at the rural level. You know, um, just looking at you know, as much as nobody wants to talk about, you know, sort of COVID-19 at this point, uh, I think we're we're talked out of that in a lot of respects. But you just look at the numbers in those rural counties, they're just not near as high. And so you're not dealing with the same sort of issues that you are um, in those more metropolitan areas. Yeah, and Mayor Ragzo, on the flip side of that, what are some of the opportunities and challenges of being mayor in a larger county like Knox? Well, I think Mayor Bynum made a good point in that in a smaller community, it's easier to get to know a larger percentage of your electorate, the people that you serve. And in Knox County, when I was mayor, we had 400,000 citizens. So it was virtually impossible to try and uh, have face-to-face -face time with each and every one of them on any type of a frequent basis. So you had to spread your message in a little bit different way, uh, television, newspapers, podcasts, whatever the case may be. Uh, in some ways, being a smaller uh, county mayor, I think, would be more difficult uh, in the sense that we had a very large staff that could handle a whole lot of different initiatives. So uh, you had people who were specialists in different areas. And like in uh, Weekly County, 
We had uh, staff that were assigned to senior centers, to our veterans programs, and those type of initiatives. Uh, many times in smaller counties, mayors have to take that on themselves to make it work or with very little assistance. So there's some advantages and disadvantages. Um, in many ways, uh, running, I would think, and uh, Jake, you can weigh in on this if you would. When I ran for county commission, uh, my commission district had right at 65,000 people in it. So it was, it was almost like running for mayor in that there wasn't a whole lot of television, wasn't a whole lot of radio. It was a lot of handshaking, meeting people, listening to them. Uh, so the smaller race is uh, a little more door-to-door -door warfare, so to speak. And when you're running countywide in a community of 400,000 people, you certainly want to get out and meet people and have events. But a lot of it is getting your message across in media and television and newspapers and other ways. So two different situations, but I think both are, are really re rewarding jobs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my entire county population is not even the size of, of a county commission's district population up there um, in Knox County. I have about just right at 35,000 people. Um, and so, you know, for me, campaigning looked very similar to a county commission in Knox County race um, in the fact that we were able to sort of knock on doors and try and meet as many constituents as we possibly can. Uh, we cover a lot of ground. Uh, you know, that sort of thing. But there again, there, that, that shows you another difference in those rural communities. So while um, you're talking about 65,000 people, you're also talking about them being probably a little closer together than my 35,000 people that, you know, I may drive down a road and drive a mile or two before I get to the next house. And so that creates some, some unique opportunities and challenges in, in a campaigning uh, aspect as well. I think you're exactly right because I could go into a, a subdivision and spend all afternoon there and meet a large group of voters and never get in my car. Just uh, park my car in one place and go around and knock on doors and meet folks and listen to their hopes and their desires and their concerns for their community. So quite different in some ways. Let's talk a little bit more about um, life on the campaign trail. I've, I worked in a congressional office and I worked on a congressional campaign and I loved the campaign work because you were out in the community doing what exactly what you two were just talking about. Uh, but that's the other side of your job. So you have, once you're elected, um, you're able to be the executive of the county um, like you've both spoken to, but what's that campaign work like, that other side of your job? Go ahead, Mayor Bynum, and I'll jump in. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, uh, once you're elected, um, and I, I, I have said this a number of times, uh, it was almost a little more challenging the second time to run, uh, because first of all, you had a record to run on, um, and then also, there was this fear of like, we think we've done everything that we possibly could do to make life better for Weekly County for the last four years, but what if everybody doesn't necessarily agree with that and how do you sort of maneuver through um, trying to keep a job that you have uh, and so that that creates some unique um, situations but uh, you know at, at, we learned pretty early on um, in the first term was is that there are really some decisions that are just going to have to be made that are tough decisions. There are decisions that not everybody's going to like. Um, you try and, you know, keep as many people happy as you possibly can. But there are those issues that sometimes you just make the, the call and you make the decision, not necessarily based on what that looks like politically, but because it's what is actually best for the community. Um, and so trying to find that balance and then, um, trying to be really good at explaining this is the reason why we made that decision and while you may not completely agree with it you know at least give me the opportunity to for you to understand why we made that decision for the betterment of the community political campaigning is i think one of the really most unique experiences an individual can have in their lives i thoroughly enjoyed it it gives you an opportunity to meet people from all walks of life and in our community in, in Knox County, you had obviously an urban area, but we had a, a rural segment too. So in East Knox County, lots of farmers, uh, their hopes and desires were sometimes often different than maybe uh, a business person from the downtown area. So it's somewhat of a balancing act. It's interesting, uh, and, and Mayor Bonham made a good point, you can't please everybody all the time. You just wanna try and explain things the best you can. And this is an interesting fact. In our American political system, when a person gets 60% of the vote, that is considered a political landslide. 
but it also means that four out of every 10 people didn't vote for you. So it's a, it's a tough balancing act to try and make people happy and do the right thing because you're not always gonna make them happy. And I think the mayor's correct. You've just got to explain yourself the best you can to make it work. But I thoroughly enjoyed uh, campaigning and it was actually in some ways easier campaigning for mayor than it was for county commission because you had the, uh, you, you spoke to larger audiences, you had more people gathered at one time, whereas county commission was just going door to door and trying to meet folks and, and make it work. But I think everybody should consider campaigning, whether you are a candidate yourself or whether you jump in and help someone who you think would do a good job serving your local community, your state or your federal government. Mayor Ragsdale, you mentioned earlier, I think I think your quote, and I'm going to try to get this right, was you said government starts at the courthouse, not at the White House, or something to that effect. Well, um, I think good government starts uh, doesn't start at the White House. It starts at the courthouse. You want it in both places, but I think it starts locally. That's what I was going for. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that. You know, I think um, we all see President Trump on TV every day. Um, we see a lot of our members of Congress and a lot of news that comes out of D.C. We see especially right now, we see Governor Lee on TV every day. But I think you could probably argue that um, the most impactful government is local government, probably has more of an effect and impact on our everyday lives than any of the state or federal government does. Um, why is local government so important? I think it's a couple of things that are really critical in local government that make it very, very important to citizens who live in your community. First of all, jobs. The county mayor uh, in many ways is responsible for helping recruit new business and to create a climate where existing businesses can grow and prosper. So most people want a good job and most people wanna stay in their home community to have that job. Secondly, is a school system. You have to fund a school system appropriately and work with the leaders of your educational uh, system to make certain that each and every child has an opportunity for not a good education, but for a great education. And then you look at seniors and veterans. While the federal government can put money into those programs, the actual care for seniors and uh, for our veterans lies with people who live in local communities. And you're responsible for their welfare and you want to make sure that they're not overlooked, forgotten, or left behind. And then other areas, whether it be parks and recreation or public health, you want to make each of those areas better. And I don't think that, uh, I don't want to say that state government is, is distant or the federal government is distant, but certainly it's not as close as those of us who've worked in local government and you're working day to day with your constituents uh, each and every day. And I would, I'd, I'd agree with that point as well. You know, uh, we use the exam, or it's not an example, we tell people. Uh, so obviously when we you look at voter turnout, the, the largest number of voter turnout across the country is for presidential elections. Um, the problem with that is, is that really at the local levels where you've got the access and the opportunity for influence um, and that every citizen sort of is on level playing field as far as influence. So, you know, I can't, even as county mayor, go up to the White House um, and walk in and talk to the president. Um, you know, I'm going to have a pretty hard time doing that um, in the governor's office at this point. Um, you know, I can talk to my state senator and my state representative when they're available and when they're here in the district. Uh, but really and truly, you look at, at mayors, um, at county commissioners, at city mayors, uh, at the local level, I mean, you show up here at the Weekly County Courthouse and you walk in and you come through the door of my office, my assistant's gonna usher you right through the door. Um, and so you have access to me nearly at every opportunity that you want. Um, to really talk to me about issues that are important to you. And that's just not what we see every day at the federal or state level. You have each um, served as mayor in a county where, um, like in Nashville, there is a, a metro government. So there's no county mayor and city mayor where both of you have served places where there are, uh, where there is a county mayor and there are at least one city mayor, city mayor, uh, Mayor Bonham, you probably have a couple. Um, what is it like working with um, city mayors how do you guys work together? And is that process kind of confusing for your constituents? Mayor Bonham, you want to go first this time? Yeah, uh, so I would I would say, first of all, it's very confusing um, for constituents um, because they think that the county mayor has sort of autonomy over everybody. You know, uh, in especially rural counties, uh, the county mayor doesn't have autonomy over hardly anybody, including all the other elected officials. So the the 
county clerk and the trustee and all of those people also don't answer to the county mayor. And so when somebody wants their road fixed, he can't just run out there and tell the road supervisor to do it. The road supervisor has the decision to do that on his own. Uh, but so I have five municipalities uh, in Weekly County. Uh, those oftentimes, while we've got a great working relationship with those five county, city mayors, um, create some issues from time to time. Uh, so whether that people have trouble in their municipality and they want you to try and help them solve that, or whether there's just a, occasionally a personality conflict between you and a city mayor, uh, I, I tell people all the time, you know, we're all we were all elected. We were all elected by um, by fairly good-sized populations, considering who we represent. Um, we all think that we're the smartest um, and the most popular person in the room, and so you get a bunch of Type A personalities that also think that they're 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 right because they were duly elected. Um, creates the opportunity for some conflict from time to time, and just trying to figure out how to maneuver through that uh, is really interesting. There are two municipalities in Knox County. You have the city of Knoxville and the town of Farragut. But in our particular community, there are actually more citizens who live outside of those two areas than there are that live inside. In county government, we had some services that neither of the two uh, cities had. Uh, there was only one school system, uh, only one health department, uh, one library system. There were uh, both uh, cities and counties have parks and recreation facilities and we do some jointly. I was very fortunate in that I had an opportunity to work with two very good uh, city mayors during my tenure. I started out with Mayor Victor Ash, uh, who was there for just a couple of, uh, I think an 18 month period. And then the rest of the time I was with uh, Mayor Bill Haslam, who later became Governor Bill Haslam. And so they were very easy to work with. We got along incredibly well. Same with the town of Farragut, Mayor Eddie Ford, who did a good job there. So we had a great relationship. Our offices are my office and Bill Haslam's office and Victor Ash's office was in the same building. So we saw each other virtually every day and, and Bill and I made a point to communicate. We really never had a uh, cross word during our six plus years together. I enjoyed working with him and we both had the mindset we're both here to serve citizens, but our, the duties were quite different because uh, many of the services that the county offered in our community, the cities didn't, and it was a different set of challenges trying to fund uh, schools, jails, libraries, health departments, and these were things that the city didn't have to worry about funding. Mayor Ragsdale, you talked about um, some of the points of emphasis you made while you were mayor, um, one of which was providing um, access to high quality education. and. Um, you were able, and you also talked about programming that you're able to introduce as mayor, one of which was Knox Achieves, which became Tennessee Achieves, which kind of led to the creation of Tennessee Promise. So how were you able to, while it was um, launched out of local government, it was privately funded, um, but how were you able to use your um, podium as mayor um, to help get that program off the ground? And why was it so important that you created that program 12 years ago now? Well, when you start a program, you hope that it's going to make a difference and have a positive influence on people's lives. And I think that uh, the Tennessee Promise has done that. But it started as a local program, as you mentioned, Knox Achieves. What we were seeing was that too many times people would graduate from our local high schools and not have a plan. Uh, kids typically fell in one of three categories. They had done very well academically and they had an opportunity for a scholastic scholarship. A second category were young folks uh, whose parents had the economic benefits of being able to send them to a college or help them get started in a business. But the third group of students were the ones that I could relate to the most. Uh, their parents had never been to college. They really didn't, weren't aware of all the opportunities that were out there. And so by starting Knox and Cheese, we were able to ensure that every graduate of a Knox County High School could go to community college tuition free. And it started with uh, a small group of people, Randy Boyd, who's now the president of the University of Tennessee, along with Rich Ray and uh, Tim Williams were instrumental in working with me early on, very early on in that process as well. Uh, Bill Haslam jumped in, uh, Chrissy D'Alejandro, who is our deputy chief of staff in the mayor's office is now the executive director of Tennessee Achieves. She did a great job of researching and looking at different ways that we could make this program a success. 
So we feel like it's been successful. And as we got it started in Knox County, we thought, you know what, we're not doing our job as public servants if we don't expand this. So it moved to a 20 plus county area originally where it was still all privately funded. And then when it went statewide and Governor Haslam and his wisdom made it the Tennessee promise, I think now it's a really deciding dif differentiator. When you look at the statistics for the Tennessee Promise program and how it works, we are doing a wonderful job of giving uh, many young Tennesseans an opportunity to have a great education, to have a great career and a better job to help uh, them meet family demands and raise families. So I'm real proud of that program. A lot of people have helped along the way. We've had, you know, Graham, since you, you're you responsible for recruiting all these folks, I can't tell you how many mentors we've had over the years, but I know it's been thousands. And people who care enough about their community that they're willing to give some time to help young people succeed. So the Tennessee Promise program is uh, is something that works very well. I'm very proud that it started in, in Knox County, and uh, I think it's going to be successful for a long time to come. Yes, sir. I think a lot of people don't know about that, that it grew from a local initiative like that. Uh, Mayor Bynum, you've been instrumental in helping us get the program off the ground in Weekly County. Certainly um, wouldn't be having the successes that we're having there without you. Why do you think a program like Tennessee Promise um, that started locally like it did in Knox County has been able to be, ha has been scalable like that? And what is the impact that you're seeing it make um, in your community? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, um, you know, I will also say that mayors are oftentimes in the R&D um, field, which is rip off and duplicate. Um, and so we're constantly sort of looking across the state to see what other people are doing, what initiatives they're implementing that then we can take back and um, either scale up or scale down into your respective community. Um, and so that is obviously not something that I'm ashamed to talk about. Uh, and so when you when you started talking about really and truly what this community needed um, and as I campaigned that first time and will probably always campaign on um, regardless of whether I'm doing this or anything else is, is what do people really want to talk about well they want to talk about jobs they want to talk about what opportunities you're going to provide for them um, and your kids and so we knew that um, that it was really important to then stick to that word uh, and so when uh, Tennessee Achieve sort of came to us and said, we're launching across the state and we really uh, need sort of local buy-in and these are the stakeholders that we've identified. Uh, it didn't take a lot of convincing for me to sort of jump on board uh, and sort of be a cheerleader for the program. We see this as an opportunity for our students to not only uh, be able to provide for themselves and then for you all to help provide for them the opportunity to receive some piece of post-secondary education. Uh, but really what it does, it also provides the community an opportunity for students to see that there are opportunities right here in their local community. And that if we can create this educated workforce, um, that then we can recruit those jobs to help them stay and work and live here for the rest of their lives. Uh, and so that's why we've been really um, uh, instrumental in trying to promote uh, the success of the program, whether that's through students doing what they're supposed to, receiving the volunteer hours that they're supposed to get, uh, filling out the paperwork that they're supposed to have, but also that mentor recruitment piece um, is something that we're really um, involved in when, when those opportunities come around every year to say like, it's your turn to give back to the community for you to actually go out there and engage with our students um, to sort of put your money where your mouth is, that you want jobs in this community, this is a way to help us get there. Mayor Bonham, you talked about that local leadership piece of Tennessee Promise, which is so, so important. Um, so being a, a leader in your local community, um, why is it important that students um, learn to get back to their communities? Why are you involved? I know you're involved in things outside of just being the mayor, um, and it's a, a component of the Tennessee Promise program, that giving back piece. Why is it so important to get back to your community? You know, um, I, I've always been one of those people that said, like, I, the reason why I give back to this community is because it gave so much to me. Um, that's really a mantra that we've sort of taken up, especially since I've been doing this, is so this community is constantly making an investment into our students. Um, so whether that's at the K-12 level, um, it, I have a four-year institution right here in the county, and so we're also making investments into those students and their lives and their quality of life. 
Um, and so I am a firm believer that if I'm making that investment um, as a community into you, then you also have to give me a return on that investment. Uh, you know, I'm, I, like I said, I was a numbers guy at a bank. So I understand that, that ROI. Uh, and so it's really important um, to, to want to give back to a community that's making that investment in you. Um, I would also say that we are also constantly saying like, it's, it's important to just be a good person, to go out and to look for opportunities where you can give back, regardless of what somebody's done for you or p potentially what advantage that you get on the back end. Like, it's just important for you to give back. Um, and so there are lots of opportunities that I've had um, to be involved in the community, uh, but, but being a mentor um, and helping other people sort of figure out the way to do things um, that makes them successful is a really great opportunity and sort of what we encourage our, our mentors to do and then to look at those students when they're required to do that community service piece and say, this is why it's important. And so don't look for the easy low hanging fruit, actually go out there and try and look for opportunities that you can actually make this community um, that's been so involved in your life a better place. Yeah, Mayor Ragsdale, would you like to elaborate? You know, we hear a lot about um, this uh, kind of a big phrase now, servant leadership. And if you get into um, becoming a leader in your community, you know, there's certainly probably uh, more money to be made leading in the private sector. Uh, we could probably make that assumption. Um, so why is it important that you are kind of leading with a servant's heart and, and serving your community in the way that you have? <laughs> I don't think we're placed here on this earth to just bite our time. I, I think we're placed here to make a difference. And the way you make a difference, uh, I think in many cases is helping others. We can't live, I don't think anybody wants to live in a community full of people where it's all about uh, I and me. I think communities are great because we think about we and us. And community service and volunteering is just that. Public service should not be a career at public expense. It should be a way of volunteering your time to make a real difference in the community in, in which you live. And I think that's critically important. As it relates to volunteering in Tennessee, I think we're really unique. You know, Missouri is the show me state. Uh, New Jersey is the granite state. Those are all well and good. But in Tennessee, we have a long and a very rich history of being the volunteer state. And we got that for a specific reason, because when there's a need, we step up, we address it, and we meet it. And I think whether you're a native Tennessean like me or uh, Mayor Bynum or someone who's moved here, that's an area that hits you very quickly. When you look at our individual communities, if there is a need, whether it's because of some tragedy or something that happened, or it's just something as simple as trying to make certain that a, a young person or an elderly person has good nutrition and a nice place to stay, that's what volunteering is about. So public service and servant leadership, I think begins with volunteering and giving of yourself to help others. There's absolutely no substitute for it. Uh, even in a high tech age in which we live now, it's still the same. People want to know that you care about them. They want to know that their needs are important to you. And it's very difficult to be a good public servant if you don't care about people. If you care about people, everything else is gonna fall into place overwhelmingly well most of the time. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And I, you know, I think we saw that here in Middle Tennessee with the recent storms that came through by, um, you know, they came hit on a Monday night and by the following Sunday, they were already telling volunteers to stay home that they'd already done the work. And it's certainly something to be proud of as a Tennessean. Um, Mayor Ragsdale, talk to us a little bit about if you had advice for students that maybe wanna go into politics, what advice would you have? Well, I think it's important to get out and meet people in their individual communities and listen to them. You need to uh, understand what the community's needs are, pe what people are hoping to see their be community become. And I think there are really a couple of key things to being a good public official. One is, as I just mentioned, you got to care about people. If you've got that, it's going to show through. It's not something you can fake. The second is you've got to be a good communicator. And that means a couple of different things. I think you have to be a good writer. I think you have to be a decent speaker. But most importantly, I think you need to be a great listener because if you can listen to people's needs and their concerns, then you can go out and do something about them. But if you spend all your time talking and not listening, 
then I think it's going to be very difficult for you to be successful. Mayor Bynum, what about you? What advice do you have for students interested in politics? Uh, you know, uh, this is not for the faint of heart or the thin skin, certainly. You know, I think that there's a piece of that that we all need to understand. Um, whether we understand that one until we get into it, um, it sometimes is really interesting. Um, you know, you find out exactly how many friends you have when you put your name on a ballot. Um, and so that's, that's always an interesting piece of it. Uh, but, but I agree, you know, really the, the, one of the best things that, that we are, that we do here at our office is just sort of that communication piece, um, is being able to come up with some initiative or somebody brings some problem into our office. Um, and then we have to go out there and not only try and fix that problem, but also go out and try and communicate why it's important. Uh, you know, neither one, uh, Mayor Ragsdale talked about his service on the county commission. Neither one of us have really talked about a relationship with a legislative body, which is entirely different as well. Um, and so just trying to communicate with those individuals sometimes is challenging. Um, and so, you know, I think it's also really important um, that as you look at uh, politics from uh, from everywhere really uh, there are very few people now that are getting into politics that haven't had some background um, that led them to that calling um, some community involvement that sort of thing nobody really sort of just wakes up one day and decides hey i think i'm going to run for office today um, that really comes from this burning desire to want to make your your home better to make this place better um, and a lot of times that starts at a far smaller, lower grassroots level um, than this chief executive officer inside the county. Uh, and so talking to students about getting involved in their community, whether that's um, through the political process or whether that's just through, um, again, those opportunities to give back um, is a piece that I think we oftentimes don't think about when we think about traditional politics today. Yeah, Mayor Bottom, elaborate maybe a little bit. Um, let's see. Well, you talked a little bit about how running for office requires some thick skin. Um, and maybe not everybody wants to put themselves out there and run for mayor, but maybe people do want to be involved in local government or they want to work in their communities in the way that they can get back and make a difference. What other career opportunities are available um, in local government where students could potentially have an, a really good opportunity to give back? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I have. I have jokingly said, and we've talked a lot about politics today, um, politics is probably now the part of the job that I really loved. That was kind of the part that kind of got me involved was this idea of campaigning and going out and, and selling your story. Um, it's now the part that, um, while I still love politics, it's kind of my hobby, uh, it's not the part that sort of drives me every day. It's the policy piece that's driving me and the work that we're doing here in this office and so there's a lot of opportunity um both i think at at the rural level but obviously at the metro level to do some really good work around policy um i will tell you that uh, so my assistant um, is also the director of communications uh, counties especially small counties need help in telling their story and getting that message out and creating those opportunities uh, but we also have lots of opportunities whether that's, like I said, um, you know, that senior citizen piece. Um, and so a lot of that's going to involve, you know, sort of human services and uh, social work and those sort of pieces. Um, and so there's lots of these different ways to kind of plug in. Uh, you know, each of us all have the same kind of constitutional officers. So, you know, you've got to have a trustee who um, knows something about local finance. Um, we have a finance department, so we're hiring accountants and bookkeepers every single day to manage the finances of the county. Um, and so it's not just these kind of elected officials that have these jobs. It's also really sort of everyday kind of clerical workers, too, that, that really have an opportunity to, to provide um, an opportunity for our citizens. Yeah, and Mayor Ragzo, what about in a little bit larger county? You talked about just how many people are employed by Knox County when you were mayor. What are some other opportunities for students that want to get involved in local government, but maybe not actually run for office? You know, there are so many. It's really countless when you begin to look about, look at it and think about it. Uh, people who run parks and recreation programs, uh, something that's very prevalent today, public health. We had a large public health uh, department in Knox County. 
law enforcement, which is critical to a community's well-being, uh, educators, which shape people's lives, groups that work with seniors and veterans, incredibly critical to having a, a great American community in which we all would like to live. Those are just a few of the things. And there are other, a lot of other elected officials. Mayor Bonham made a good point. You know, communities have an elected sheriff, an elected trustee, an elected clerk. Uh, the late Howard Baker, who was an absolutely great senator from Tennessee and a magnificent statesman, said, if you want to make a real difference in your community, don't run for Congress, don't run for mayor, run for school board. And that's something that I've always remembered. I haven't done that, but he felt that if you ran for school board and shaped public education, that may, may be one of the more important jobs in a local community. And it, it's hard to argue that point. So I think there are just many, many ways that you could be involved in government and serve. Uh, is running for polit political office important? It is, and we need good people to do that. But there are also so many supporting jobs that are available that also lead to great careers and great opportunities to assist people. Well, Mayor Ragsdale, Mayor Byam, I appreciate you both coming on and sharing your expertise today about careers in local government and ways to get involved and sharing your experience as mayor. Uh, we end all these with three questions um, that are kind of outside the scope of our topic today, but just kind of general advice things for students. Um, and so I'll wrap the first two questions kind of into one. They kind of go hand in hand. Um, Mayor Ragsdale, we'll start with you. Um, what's something that you know now that you did not know while you were a student in college that you wish that you knew? And then you can tie in any um, your most important piece of advice for students. Great, great question. You know, when I was in college, uh, I wish that I knew how much uh, that I learned then would impact what I do later. And by that, I mean, uh, if you're given an opportunity to have uh, the chance to get engaged in higher education, you absolutely need to give it your best shot and make it work. It is a uh, golden opportunity that we have in this country that many places don't have. So do the best you can. And on a practical level, and I'll tell students this that I mentor for Tennessee Achieves, go to class. Uh, very few people fail if they go to class every, every time that they have it. Where most people fail is they begin to miss classes. So I'd encourage you to go to class. And the last thing, and I've touched on this a little bit earlier, it's important to be a good communicator. And that involves several pieces. And the one that I would tell them not to overlook is to be a great listener. If you do that, I think you're going to have a very successful career path. Yeah, you wouldn't believe how many students we talk to that are struggling. And we ask if they go to class or tell us that they're not going regularly, which is uh, seems like a pretty common sense solution sometimes. But showing up and, and being on time and having a, a good attitude oftentimes will carry as far as anything. Um, Mayor not, Bonham, not going is a recipe for failure. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor Bynum, uh, something you wish you knew while you're in college that you didn't know and maybe your one big piece of advice for students? Yeah, so um, I think maybe the one thing I wish I knew um, in college uh, was is that it's important to find something that you think you're going to love. Um, more important than it is to find something that you think is going to make you a lot of money. Um, I, I will tell you that I think uh, success looks different in a lot of different ways. Um, and a lot of times we try and put a monetary piece on that. Uh, but really and truly, uh, while, uh, Graham, you've mentioned this already today, I may not get rich being the mayor of Weekly County. It is a job I love, and so it's very satisfying, um, and some of that you just can't buy. Um, and so that that's an important piece um, that I think sometimes we, uh, as college students, miss. Um, and then I have often said that, um, so that collegiate experience had far less to do for me uh, in the classroom aspect of it. Um, as it did with the relational aspect. Um, and so college is a training ground to sort of get you prepared for real life. Uh, and so you deal with lots of personalities on a college campus. Um, you deal with, uh, you know, professors, instructors, faculty members. That gives you a really good sort of um, framework for just how to deal with people. Uh, as Mayor Ragsdale said, it's important to go to class, um, not only because that puts you on a trajectory for success in a classroom, but also you're going to be expected to go to work when you graduate. Um, and so that's setting up these habits that then are going to sort of carry you through very successful careers as well. And so that college piece is a really great training ground and use those opportunities to then make yourself successful later on in life. 
Yes, sir. I think that's really good advice from both of you. Um, this is probably my favorite question. It'll be the last question of the webinar today. Um, mayor Bynum, if you weren't mayor and you could do anything and time and money or maybe even talent and ability didn't matter at all, what would you do? Um, so there are lots of jobs out there that I would love to do. They all, though, sort of involve the same kind of work that I'm doing here, so that policy piece. Um, and so those aren't any fun, so I won't talk about any of those. Um, so if I could do anything in the world, um, probably I would be a professional CrossFit athlete. Um, if, I could, if I could do, do anything I wanted to, that, that would be what I would do. So professional CrossFit athlete with a policy gig on the side. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> that, that sounds fair. Mayor Ragsdale, I know that you are. I know you exercise a lot. I think you run in the mornings. But what about you? What, are, what would you be doing if uh, you've now transitioned from mayor into um, a different role? But if you could be doing anything, what would you be? Well, Graham, you sort of always bait me with this question a little bit uh, because you know how much I love to golf. So uh, I would love to be a professional golfer, but that may be a little bit out of the realm of possibility. And you would That's understand me. that if you saw me play. As much as I enjoy it, I'm not that good at it. So I think uh, what I would like to do uh, is go back to the, the reason I started college. Uh, when I came to the University of Tennessee in 1971, I wanted to be a teacher and thought maybe I wanted to be a coach. And I thought it'd be great to work with young people and help them uh, along the educational path. So that would that would be it. But I, I, I tell you, I'd have a, a, a hard time topping what Mayor Bynum came up with because I think that's amazingly unique. And if, if we could do that, Mayor, and get paid for what we want to do, uh, those would be two pretty good gigs for both of us. I, I agree. I agree. I, I, if if I could just do that and make a lot of money, then I could do whatever I wanted to on the side. You know, I could really affect real change um, as a CrossFit athlete, I'm certain. <laughs> there you go. You know, I feel like most of our panelists throughout recording these webinars have <clears throat> maybe talked about things that don't require such hard work. CrossFit, professional CrossFit athletes sounds <laughs> really challenging. Yeah, but see, I'm no good at it as an amateur, so I just think that if I could, if I, you said I didn't have to have any actual skill ground, so that's, that's what I'm hanging my hat on. I have no actual skill today. Mayor I, have to, I have to tell you, Mayor, it really did sound impressive, though. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, Mayor Ragsdale um, had an advantage. He's recorded one of these with us previously about leadership, which is really good, and encourage our students to listen to that one. He, he knows I want to be a golfer, but um, you know, I don't think my 20 handicap is going to allow me to do that. Well, I want to thank um, both um, Mayor Mike Ragsdale, Mayor Jake Bynum. Thank you both for hopping on today and talking to us about careers in local government, your experience as mayor. Um, we tied a lot of different topics into this. I think there's certainly a leadership piece, a giving back piece. Um, and appreciate both of you sharing um, your uh, expertise with us and your time as mayor and just time being involved in your communities. And, and thanks for everything that you guys do for our program. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Thank you Mayor Rachel. Thank you, Mayor Bonham. And hope to come to Weekly County sometime soon. And when I do, I'm going to catch up with you. Please do. Come on. His door's always open. I can. He talked about it in the webinar, and I can testify as someone who's just stumbled in one day that he's always available. So thank you guys both. And uh, for our students that have been listening in today, I hope that you enjoyed learning more about careers in local government. I hope that you learned a lot from both of our panelists. I know that I certainly did um, learn a lot from listening to their um, talk today about their time as mayor and being involved in their communities. So hope you took something away from that. Hang on for one more second so that you can learn um, how to make sure this counts towards your community service requirement. We hope that you will listen in to some of our other virtual community service webinars at www.tnachieves.org. Thanks for tuning in today, and we hope that you have a great day. Thank you for watching this installment of the Tennessee Achieves Virtual Community Service Webinar. Your attendance will be automatically recorded, and your one hour of community service is being credited to you. Please click Submit on this screen to ensure that your attendance is recorded for you. For this community service opportunity, you will not need to complete the community service form. We hope you found this opportunity to be engaging and informative. Please watch more of this series by visiting www.tnachieves.org. We hope you have a great day. Thank you.